Hi, David here. Hope everybody's well. Uh, I just wanted to reach out to you. It's about that time again. I call it kind of the halftime report. Six months into the year, kind of where do we stand? It's obviously been a very difficult year. Uh, probably one of the most challenging years I've seen it as an advisor in a long time. Uh, but really, it's the toughest market we've had, the worst start of any market in 50 years, over 50 years, since 1970. Um, which was kind of a similar marketplace. We had inflation, uh, double-digit inflation back in those times. And so we're facing some of the same issues, high inflation, uh, a war in Ukraine, um, supply chain issues that we've had. But really all this started uh, after we had the, the COVID outbreak and the COVID crash, I call it, during uh, the first quarter of 2020. And basically what we did is we doubled the size of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. What that means, we just stimulated the economy so much, put so much money in the system, had basically zero interest rates. So when you do that, the market's going to go up. The market's about liquidity. A lot of liquidity, low interest rates, so markets are going to go higher. So I could argue they're probably artificially high. They were um, and, and still probably are. And the fact is we have to work some of that off. Um, and so the inflationary environment we're in right now, with the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, we have some headwinds. So kind of to recap, you know, this year the market's down 20%. The S&P 500, kind of the, the baseline for most investors. The NASDAQ, which is the technology part of the, of the equation, down 30%. Here's where the pain is for a lot of investors. Long-term treasury bonds and treasury bonds, down 20%. Uh, basically, it's a Vanguard uh, fund, a 60-40 stock and bond portfolio, which the average investor has, um, is down 17%. So that's where a lot of pain that I'm seeing prospective clients come in. Um, uh, thank God our clients are nowhere down near uh, this, uh, this amount. Um, and so a lot of that pain has come not only as kind of insult to injury, we've had the stock markets down 20, 30%, and we've had you know, a balanced portfolio, quote, balanced portfolio, safe portfolio, not in this case, down 17%. That's a problem for a lot of retirees. So the fact is, is that you know the bond market has really exacerbated the pain for the average investor this year. Again, we've been very pleasant. Uh, uh, we, we've been very fortunate. The fact that we've not kind of had this kind of pain as a firm, but the fact is that this is what's happening right now. So in this video, I'm gonna go a little deeper into some of the areas that I think are headwinds and potential opportunities going forward. Let's talk about the Federal Reserve or the Fed. There's the old saying, don't fight the Fed, which I strongly believe in, meaning that when the Federal Reserve is reducing interest rates, then usually markets will go up, stock markets, bond markets, real estate. Well, it also works the opposite way. When they're raising interest rates, you have to pay attention because typically asset prices are going to be under stress. In 2018, the Federal Reserve was raising interest rates. They, they stopped that pretty quickly, but the market was down 20%. Right now, we're kind of in a similar situation, down about 20% on the S&P, around 30% uh, on the NASDAQ um, as of the end of June. But the fact is, is that you know we, we have to pay attention. Right now, we've had rates go from really 0% just last year up to a federal funds rate of around 1.5%. They're talking about raising rates about 75 uh, to 100 basis points, which means in English, 1%, right? 0.75 to 1%. And so that would bring us to around 2.5% on the federal funds rate, which is the, the barometer, the benchmark, the, the lever they pull to raise interest rates. With the target rate, you're talking around 3.5%. And that's where they think they need to be uh, to get to more little equilibrium with interest rates and where the economy is and trying to reduce uh, the, quote, demand destruction, really slow down the economy. Because this all started really uh, from the Federal Reserve really reducing interest rates, all the stimulus that happened. And so it's kind of taking that back away. Um, and so the fact is, is that interest rates are really a headwind right now. Now, depending who you talk to, we're probably closer to the end of the hiking cycle. Um, a lot of people I follow that I respect in this business doing this for even longer than I have, you're probably talking a terminal rate of interest rates or this target rate of maybe closer to 3%. So with this next hike around two and a half, we may be at the, at the end of this cycle. The market's probably not gonna turn around until the Fed stops hiking um, and, and, and they change their monetary policy. Now, whether it's a good or bad idea, we can debate, but that's probably what, you know, what we're waiting for to see the market recover. Also, we're looking at earnings that are going on right now. That's gonna be another issue. But let's move on to inflation as the next topic to discuss a little deeper. Inflation, kind of one of the biggest questions I get from, from clients, from yourselves, from anybody I talk to right now is inflation. David, what's happened with inflation? What do you think? Is it going to persist? Is it going to get worse? You know, we definitely have, you know, we have the worst inflation we've had since 1981. 
Um, the CPI index came in just for June at 9.1%. You know, the big difference between today and 1981, um, besides that was over 40 years ago, is that you had the federal funds rate was around 12%. To put that in perspective, our interest rates now, based on federal funds, are around one and a half to two percent, right? So typically, you have to have short-term interest rates be above inflation to really tame inflation. That's what Volcker did, uh, the Federal Reserve Chair in the 80s, to combat inflation. We don't have that luxury. Um, what the Fed's hoping is that we can get inflation down and therefore we don't have to raise interest rates as much. Their, their target rate's around three and a half percent. We're currently around two. Uh, they're probably gonna raise about three quarters of a point next week. So get us closer to that, that target rate. Uh, we're definitely behind the curve. So, you know, again, 9.1 uh, inflation is probably a lot higher. Uh, there's a, there's a, a site I subscribe to called Shadow, uh, Shadow Rates, and really you're looking at inflation really, which we feel in the 15 to 20% range, um, which is more realistic. Here's kind of the good news. We have commodity price like copper, oil. Copper's down about 30%. Oil's down about 20%. You've seen gas prices drop about 50 cents a gallon nationally. We pay a lot higher gas prices here, but the average national price was around $5, and it's now around 450. That's about a 10% drop. That's helpful. But the problem is we don't know how sustainable that is. Are we in a trajectory down or not? Um, so, you know, what my personal, you know, thoughts are about this, it's so hard to be able to predict what's going to happen with inflation. What I can tell you, the good news is we're probably past peak inflation, quite honestly. You're also seeing housing starting to soften up a little bit, um, which is a good thing. And that's what the Federal Reserve is trying to do. They're trying to slow down the economy. The problem is they can't control the supply side, oil, you know, natural gas out of Russia, wheat prices, things like that, that have come down as well because of demand. So that's still a wild card out there, but the fact is, is that you've probably seen peak inflation. Um, and so on a forward basis, you know, what I, what I believe is probably gonna happen is that we're gonna have, you know, we're gonna have lower inflation, but we're probably not gonna get to 2% for the next couple of years. Um, from everything that I've read and seen and studied, you're probably talking from inflation moderating the four or 5% range, most likely, um, because we still can't control the war in Russia. Um, we can only do so many things here in the United States with the Federal Reserve really raising rates. And that will bring us to, you know, we'll talk about in a minute here about recession. Um, so I think the good news is inflation should moderate. Um, but the fact is, is that, you know, where does that stabilize at? You know, the, the Federal Reserve's target is 2%. I think that's a little ambitious right now um, with everything that's going on. Um, we still have full employment. In, you know, the employment rate is 3.6% historical lows. That's a good thing to help the economy along. Um, but it's a balancing act with the Fed. So CPI and inflation are our problem, uh, but hopefully moderating. And again, we'll talk about uh, the big R word here next. The R word recession. Uh, again, probably the second question I get besides David, what's happening with inflation uh, is, are we in a recession? Are we heading into recession? Um, and so let's look at that a little closer. The technical definition of a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP or gross domestic product. We already had the first quarter was negative. We had a minus 1.6 GDP. Uh, second quarter, we don't know yet. We'll get GDP out in a couple of weeks. But I can tell you what I've seen is there's what's called the Atlanta Fed. They have a GDP now tracker, which kind of, you know, on the fly, uh, looks at where GDP is projected to go. It's pretty accurate, especially the closer you get to actual GDP being announced. And it's showing right now we have a negative GDP of 1.5%. So if that holds true, we're technically in a technical recession. Now, what does that mean going forward? Well, you know, it's kind of a word. I mean, where we can kind of check the boxes, you know, an inverted yield curve, right? What's an inverted yield curve? Basically, where you have short-term interest rates that are higher than long-term rates, and that's signaling that you have slower growth going forward. Kind of check the box there. Dr. Copper, uh, the copper market is very good at forecasting recessions because when you have copper prices down 30, 40%, which they've been, that's a, that's a sign of lessing demand. Um, and so less growth. So kind of check that box. And number three, we're in a bear market already. We're down, you know, depending where you're at in the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ down 20 to 30%. Those typically coincide with recession. So, you know, I don't get too hung up on, on, on the R word. You know, are we in recession? Are we gonna be in recession? I don't think it really matters necessarily uh, to where the stock market is right now. Um, you know, we gotta be forward looking, right? You know, Wayne Gretzky always said, you know, we gotta, we gotta skate where the puck's going, not where it's at. 
Um, and so I kind of think of markets that way. So you know, the fact is, is that, yeah, whether we're in recession or not, uh, you know, uh, the good news is, right, it's like, David, is there good news here, right? Um, these are hard to do sometimes because they're so negative. We're talking about inflation and recession and bear markets, not that fun. Um, but the fact is, going forward, um, you're typically looking at, you know, right now we're in the middle of, of, of earnings, uh, which is going to tell us a lot, especially when we get out another week or so, when you start getting into the, to the technology areas like the Apples, the Amazons, Microsofts, will tell us a lot as well. Right now we're having the banks and some other type of industries. But, but that's important to get that through and see what the guidance is. But the fact is, is that if we are in a recession, um, you know, we are going to be hopefully looking at the other side of that. What's the other side of that? Well, markets have come down quite a bit. There's probably some more room to go. I don't know for sure, but there probably is. Um, those are going to be better buying opportunities or, or ways to maybe ramp up a little more equity exposure. Um, and then eventually the Fed will pivot, meaning they'll go from, you know, raising interest rates to, to, to lower interest rates or stop raising interest rates. Um, so those are all positive, I think, going into, into the third and fourth quarter of this year. Um, you know, again, inflation is starting to moderate a little bit. So hopefully that keeps up. Um, but if you have any questions, want to reach out to me, please do. God bless. Take care.